Well, there we have it, guys. We have the winner of the Six Nations 2023. Ireland taking this game 29 points to 16, meaning they get the win, the Triple Crown, the Grand Slam. Johnny Sexton's the all-time championship record holder for points. It's all been going on in this game, so I'm looking forward to doing a bit of a review over this final game of the Six Nations. These are the videos, of course, where we go over the game, have a bit of a recap, of the highlights, the scores, some fun stats, and some thoughts on uh, the game because there's certainly a couple of controversial things to uh, talk about along the way. So, getting into this game, then uh, final scoreline looking a little bit separate. I don't necessarily think it ties in actually quite how well England performed in this game. The step up from their loss to France last week, they made a massive bounce back to this one, but Ireland just absolutely wanting it more desperately. So starting out then with the first half, and it was actually England who got off to a bit of a better start. They had two big turnovers in that opening five minutes, really pushing Ireland back a little bit. They came to combat that breakdown situation, England loading basically every ruck with as many people as they could defensively off the line as fast as possible and forcing Ireland into mistakes it causing uh, an early penalty for England which was slotted through by Owen Farrell his kicking today much better than we got to see the last time he was out versus uh, Wales so England actually took the lead uh, in the opening 10 then only by three points after conceding the three Ireland went back on the offensive getting a bit more hand on ball a few less mistakes getting to deal with some of that England pressure now I thought this game was going to be a bit more of a battle of the boot. I was expecting Farrell and Sexton to be kicking threes all day long. Ireland didn't really want to play it that way. Uh, they actually turned down two penalties within that first 10 minutes. Would have been a nice six points for them along the way. They chose not to. They were trying to kick to the corner for the first one and then for the second one. They actually went for a tap and go. Neither of them leading to any points though. So not the best first sort of entry into that England 22 for them. Uh, it was England though who got next onto the scoreboard again. Uh, this was Porter uh, hitting a lifter early at the line out. Very silly penalty. Really easy to pick up with a touch judge right there. Strange call to go for, uh, but slotted through by Farrell as well. So at the 15 minute mark, England are up six points to nil, but Ireland hit back strong. Sinclair off feet um, in the breakdown situation. Again, it's one of the things England were trying so hard to put over on Ireland is that they were going to compete at the breakdown, but sometimes just pushing it that bit too far. There were penalties beginning to be incurred in that one. Sexton slotting that one through to become the championship record holder for points, so congratulations to him today. What a great game he had in this one. We had to wait till the 33rd minute to get our first try of the game then. Coming in from Sheehan, this was off the back of an Ireland lineout. Where else are you going to be find in uh, Dan Sheen. He's going to be going there. Big driving mall. Van der Fleer splitting off away. England have obviously done their research. We saw them today getting ready for those splinter sort of malls going away. They were ready for the breakaway. They weren't ready though for Van der Fleer to pop it back inside. He's such a danger runner himself. You've got to mark in and Sheen hit on such a good line straight between two defenders. No one going to be able to get to him there. Nice run over try for him. Sexton converting that one. So taking Ireland into the lead 10 points to 6 and that is where we're going to be ending the uh, the first half, but not before a bit of a controversial talking point. Freddie Stewart getting his red card uh, impact to the head on Hugo Keenan. Now, I like to weigh in on these things. People either agree with me or they don't. <laughs> so I'm interested to know your thoughts as well. Feel free to drop down in the comment section what you think about this uh, red card. Now, this is one of those ones for me where I think by letter of the law, I think that is a red card. Um, but it's one of those red cards that I've sort of mentioned on the channel before how much I really dislike that these can get turned into uh, into red card situations. The ball has been forward past going out. It's not been picked up very well by Hugo Keenan. He's trying to recollect. It doesn't work for it. He's run into Freddie Stewart, who made the incorrect choice of turning sideways, showing his shoulder, and we had an elbow collision to the head of Hugo Keenan. Now, in the ref's words, it was from distance, clear visible line with force, and it's an elbow to the head. He's stuck within those letter of the laws. It's a red card. Now, for me, it's one of those ones where, yes, okay, we understand what's happened there, and it did actually cause Hugo Keenan to go off for the rest of the game. So, you know, at least there was an actual impact from that. It wasn't just a red card, and he was just fine. He carried on with his game. There was a genuine impact to the Ireland team. It warrants it more towards being a, a red card in that there. Um, but there's so many different talking points around this. I'm, I really don't like the idea of players running with their head down it wasn't necessarily Hugo Keenan's fault he wasn't running with the ball in hand head down he was trying to collect a loose ball and he's run with his head down about hip height and Stewart's hit him with the elbow now we've had a couple of them across the tournaments players 
coming from low positions, making collisions with a defender. Um, Johnny Sexton on Liam Williams is one that sort of springs to mind straight off the back. He's coming up from a lifting position. He's gone into Liam Williams, and Liam Williams got yellow carded for that one. Um, now, I don't like these because, to me, in terms of consistency in refereeing, if you're going to give that as a red card, fine. But I feel like you've got to be consistent then throughout the game. And what that said to me is if at any point during the game... A player is running with their head at hip height and you run into someone's elbow or shoulder or something. That should be a red card. And I feel like if you slow down most tackles, you know, throughout a game, you'll actually find 10 of them. <laughs> You'd have no one left on the field. So I feel a bit harsh against Freddie Stewart for that one, but I understand the uh, the laws around that one. So England went down uh, to 14 men for an entire half in this game. Halftime notes, um, I just sort of said how it was an exciting half. Ireland certainly grew into the half. They didn't necessarily start out the uh, the strongest. Uh, the set piece is leading towards Ireland. The line out certainly going their way. The scrum was looking like it was actually going towards Ireland. I thought Ireland got a little bit unlucky with a couple of the calls from the referee at the, uh, the scrum time. There's certainly looked to be a couple where Ireland were moving forwards and he gave the, the penalty to England claiming it was the an Irish sort of prop wheeling it round. I thought a couple of them were a bit, uh, a bit questionable. The English defensive strategy, really good straight up off the line blitz defence rushing up and sort of sweeping around really mitigating some of the Ireland attack we've seen do so well um, throughout this tournament. I thought it was a fantastic setup and loading up in those rock times so they could have just kept the penalty count down a little bit. I think that would have worked quite well for them. Um, and then finally the red card, just a couple of things that were running through my mind to do with that red card. Um, was Freddie Stewart backing out? Should that make an impact? Should there be a bit of a further rule around has the attacker actually put themselves in a dangerous position and whether that should be mitigated in, in future contacts? I think that's an interesting talking point. Um, a value one that I actually don't know the answer to. Um, the ball had actually come from a forward pass. The clock was already red. The whistle was actually going to go and end the half. And then this collision happened after that incident. I wonder what the leniency is towards uh, an incident happening where the final whistle would have gone for the half, but the incident happened sort of after the whistle probably should have already been blown. Um, and then it's classed a cynical play, getting red carded after an incident happened where the whistle should have already blown. There's a couple of interesting talking points. I'm looking forward to see uh, what you guys have to say uh, down in the comment section. But Ireland looking dominant throughout it, considering the scoreboard pretty close. Ireland looked definitely in charge. 61% possession, 39 to England. Um, the penalty count, 3 to Ireland, 7 to England. So working hard in that breakdown, but sometimes uh, just going a little bit too far. In terms of that full-time result, then the scoreboard certainly ticking up, like I said, on it was a bit of a battle for the boot didn't end up that being that way uh considering hookers haven't necessarily been the highest performers throughout the tournament this was a, a game for the hookers to uh, be going on so in the opening 10 of the second half then both teams getting on the front foot at different times trying to feel each other out england down to 14 men they're having to try and work out a bit of a different strategy anthony watson dropping back to fullback being able to play there very well of course opting for a bit more of a kicking game, trying to run down the clock a little bit. And I think the second half worked really well for them. Uh, Ireland didn't score for 20 minutes of this second half while England was sat on 14 men. Thought they did extremely well. And England were actually the first ones to get on the board in this one. After being pinned back quite a bit in that uh, opening second half, they did eventually get their penalty coming from Furlong, um, collapsing the scrum. That was one of the ones, again, that I felt was a little bit harsh. It looked to me very much like Ellis Genge hinged and it was uh, it went against Furlong for, for overextending. Uh, but England got the penalty in that one and Farrell slotting that one through again so took it to 10-9 only one point in this game with half hour left on the clock but Ireland managed to galvanize in that final 20 minutes the uh the first try coming in from Robbie Henshaw been looking forward to seeing him back in a in an Ireland shirt for some decent game time Ireland were on the attack they went for a large cross field kick and drove England back over their own trial line, giving them a five meter scrum. They played it out from the scrum two phases later, Henshaw receiving a lovely pop pass from Bundyaki and taking it over the line. And that was probably the first time in the second half where Ireland really felt like they were aiming to make the most of the, the man down for England. They really didn't stretch England very wide considering they had that red card for 20 minutes of the game. They were doing a lot more kicking battles, running through the forwards. They weren't really trying to test that defensive line at all. That was probably the first occasion we really got to see them attempted and it did end up resulting uh, in a try. Successfully converted by Sexton had a good kicking game today. Anyway, to saw Ireland get to 17 points to nine. The breakdown by this point is becoming a little bit more erratic for England. That penalty count really beginning to build. About the 65 minute Islander on five penalties England are on 
12 and a couple of them were certainly avoidable and you've still got 15 minutes left to play uh, only a few minutes late then we got to see dan sheehan get over for his second try of the game two lovely little runs down the blind side actually beginning the attack himself running it down getting stopped by port Vliet in that backfield they played on and then cut back inside to him and he went over for his second try didn't pick him in my fantasy league regretting that decision now because he played absolutely fantastic in this game um again slotted over by sexton incredibly hard kick right from the uh, the touchline but a superb job from him England did get uh, a try back though Jamie George getting over from his a huge driving more from England from a set piece where it looked pretty even maybe even leaning towards Ireland for big chunks of this game the driving more from England absolutely fantastic from Ireland's own 22 edge driven all the way over the try line superb Ireland actually pulled a couple of people out of the mall I don't think they realized what good shape England were in for that one, but they did manage to get over there for their try and Farrell kicking that over. So drawing England back to eight points. There was only five or six minutes left on the clock. Would England be able to make the most of it? But unfortunately for them, that penalty count catching back up to them. Another penalty going to Ireland. They kick down into the English 22 and Rob Herring gets over for his try off the back of the mall, splitting off himself and riding a tackle over the try. Ben Curry, um, unfortunately, not necessarily having a couple of good tackles today there was a couple of off tackles from him after he came on um conversion was missed by ross Byrne, but at that point we're already at that 29 points to 16 score I've also just realized before that Rob Herring try, uh, the reason for the penalty was Jack Willis's yellow card. I completely skipped over that in my uh, in my notes. That was for a tip tackle on Jack Conan. Um, that's another one of those ones. He, he uh, To me, he absolutely lifted him. He did a secondary move to, to tilt him over, but it did not really help that it ran also into another England player, which sort of flipped him a little bit more. Um, yellow card for a tip tackle. Maybe it could have been a penalty. I think he landed much more awkwardly than he probably needed to. The second England player also taken out his legs probably wouldn't have helped him in that situation. So yellow card going to uh, Jack Willis was what actually um, set up for the Rob Herring try. England had one last surge. They got right back up to the Ireland try line. They also had one last big driving mall, but very well defended by Ireland to secure out this game. 29 points to 16. Um, five tries in the game, four of which coming from hookers, uh, which really we haven't seen across this tournament at all. The the, uh, the driving wall and being such a big influence in this game but congratulations to Ireland on not just winning the Six Nations but for getting the Grand Slam and the Triple Crown I'm sure it will be a awesome St Paddy's weekend over there in Ireland get some Guinnesses in for me because uh, I don't have any <laughs> but what a fantastic final weekend of rugby thank you to everyone who has been watching the coverage on the channel across the Six Nations to all the new subscribers Welcome to the channel. We've got a couple of really fun videos also coming up throughout this week. We've got our prediction versus reality video going to be coming out at some point. And I am also planning on doing a live stream uh, coming up on Thursday, Thursday the 23rd. It'll be 7 p.m. UK time. We'll jump on. We'll play some Rugby 22. We'll talk about some of the games and thoughts and what have you. So make sure uh, you've got that booked in and you are subscribed to the channel to know when that live stream goes live. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. I will see you all next time, guys. Bye-bye.